What's going on? Oh, What's going on, y'all? Girl. Your girl did not, listen, I almost didn't make it. And I was literally deciding whether or not to do it right now because as soon as I pulled up to the crib, guess who outside finna set up? The church people, okay? So, um, I get it. But anyway, anyway, so if y'all hear some stuff, it's just the church people outside. I don't know what they out there for, but, well, they want to spread the word. They want to spread the gospel. I don't know who's about there. Ain't nobody outside but them, so there's that. But anyway, um, and plus today, y'all, girl, I wanted to do this earlier. I know I come on here and just give y'all a rundown because this is my time just to talk for a second. I wanted to get on here and give it to y'all earlier, but, girl, when I woke up this morning, I was fine. Then I went back to sleep for a second, and then I woke back up, and after I woke back up, I had a headache. I had a headache that came out of nowhere, and I thought it was just a regular headache or a sinus headache because, you know, sometimes it be dry, and so they're sinus. Girl, hell no. I get to work, and it just felt like it was getting worse and worse and worse, sir, okay? And I said, I know this is not a migraine. Good thing I had some migraine pills over there. I really felt like I was about to call out, and I wanted to do this before, but I had to give myself a few hours to get into the mood and to see what's going on. And thank goodness I just needed to eat something and I took the migraine pills and I'm good. So let's just get up into it. Um, I hope y'all have had a better day than my, me because I was tired. I was about to go home, but I said, Ash, you can stick it out, bitch. You are going to go to work for the whole week. It's going to be two weeks in a row that I not take off. Okay. Listen, listen, I'll take off in a minute. Because at one point, there was a time where I never took off. And all my time was just building up and building up. And I'm like, you know what? At this point, they're going to take that away from me. So, girl, I might as well use it. But anyway, I hope y'all have been doing good. <clears throat> I know who ain't been doing good. Kalani. Okay. But we'll talk about that later. Anyway, um, let's just get into it. Enough chit-chat. Let's get the small stuff out of the way. Adele is engaged, okay? Just in case anybody wanted to know, our Jamaican sister, Adele, she is engaged to her man, Rich Paul. Who the hell is Rich Paul? I know of him. I don't really know what he do. Is he in sports or is he in music? You know, I got the computer right here, so I could look it up. Um, But yeah. You know, he came to our job, my job uh, uh, earlier this year. Or I say a couple of months ago or whatever, when we had the um, all staff day, he was up there. And I was like, oh, okay. I know. They said he was downstairs. Let me look it up. Don't come for me, y'all. Rich. Oh, it's right there. Rich Powell is an American sports agent and founder of Clutch Sports Group. His most notable client is basketball player LeBron James. LeBron James? Oh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. So that's cool. You know, shout out to the sis. Moving on from that. She was at her concert flashing that ring. I said, oh, no, that's right. But um, moving on, let's just get it to some mess. The Olympics. Finally over. Finally done with. Out of everything that went down, how was your overall opinion of the Olympics? Like I said before, I didn't really watch. I watched clips here and there. Um, but, baby, I feel so bad for a few people, a couple of people. I feel bad for Gabby Williams. I'm going to tell you why. Because when the women basketball play uh, team was playing against France, U.S. was playing against France, and it was like what? It could have been tied, okay? U.S. won by one point. I mean, you know, the women's basketball team always winning, but we won by one point. It was a it was a nail biter, right? Gabby was on Team France, okay, and she tried to hit that three pointer so that it could tie the game up. Baby, it was a two pointer because she stepped on line. I said, damn, that'd be so. Uh, do you know how messed up I feel? Like I go into had it knowing that. I caused my team, probably thinking that my team and my city and my country probably feel like, oh, my God, girl, you caused us to lose the medal. Okay, we could have got gold, and now we got silver. We got this and we got that because you missed it by – you couldn't put your foot back, and you put it on the line, and we missed it by one point. 
we could have tied it up and we could have went to overtime and all that. But, you know, I feel bad for her, but she'll be all right. She'll be all right. Good game, y'all. Good game. Meanwhile, Miss Jordan Childs, I feel so sorry for the mess that they are putting her through and has put her through to the point where mama had to shut down her social media. All right. Her sister has been tweeting about everything that's going on. And um, I just feel like like a lot of other people feel like this, you know, it's going to be some people that's going to be like, oh, this ain't got nothing to do with racism or whatever. But let me tell you something. Paris has been acting up that whole time. And I've heard about, you know, the blatant racism and stuff that be going on over there, Paris, Italy, all that stuff, whatever. But, you know, to actually see that shit on full display, Aisha Curry and her, um, um, her mother-in-law, that whole situation, I get that they was trying to tell them that, you know, um, a part, sorry, what, what was it? That particular side of the street always be closed for a certain reason or whatever at a certain time or whatever. Okay, that's fine. They was just trying to get to their car. But for that other police officer who was just going off on um her, and then I think he accidentally, I don't know if he accidentally, but I'm going to say accidentally, but then again, I'm going to take it back. He hit the little baby in the head. Okay. And um, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you got Aisha sitting there crying. You got Draymond Green up there trying to see what's going on and trying to calm things down. I said this, and Stephen, his Stephen Curry, his mama going off, okay? And I was just like, this don't make no sense. Get them out of there, all right? Get them out of there. And then the whole thing about Noah, you know, he was allegedly sick. We going to say alleged because, listen, he got over the, he got over his girl real quick. He got over his girl real quick. He ran his wet race. He won it. Came out, said that. Oh, I had a little bit of a little bit of Miss Girl. You know, did he ran another race? Next thing you know, he up in the club three days later. Three days later, just having a ball. I said, oh. I mean, it is what it is, though. But, you know, his mama was making a fuss saying that, you know, they didn't even let her or they wasn't even trying to get him help right away or whatever. But, hey, you know, I said, get them niggas out of there. Freak niggas in Paris. Get them niggas out of there. Thank God they did. But back to Jordan Child, she probably has the worst story of it all. You know, she would have had, like, a real positive story with her winning, like, a couple of uh, medals, right? The whole team won the gold medal for the women's Olympic team, gymnastic Olympic team. And then the medal that she won for her floor exercise, which was a bronze medal, is now taken away from her. Girl, let me tell you something. Do you know I'll be suing? Okay, I will be suing. I'll be cutting the up. You will never forget me because I will make a scene. I mean, it probably ain't going to help nothing. It probably make the situation worse, but you're not going to embarrass me. So therefore, I'm going to embarrass you. And that's exactly what they're doing. Okay. Now, she was on that floor and, you know, I didn't even realize that she had came into fifth place at first. Right. And so the coach was like, uh -uh, you're going to have to check that again. Okay. And so the judges had to do a little bit of configuration. They was like, oh, okay. So we're going to bump you up you know, to third place, so you get that bronze, okay, over Romania, now, sorry to Romania, Miss Girlie, she was celebrating a little bit too soon, you know, she got up there with her flag, she was like, yes, Romania, we got it, we got my break in the hole, excuse me, what you mean USA got it, oh, shit, you know, the way her face dropped, I felt a little bad, I felt a little bad then, okay, I don't know how I feel now, I don't know how I feel now, because, I feel like they putting her through the ringer, and I just feel like they want to do this to embarrass her. You know, they just want to embarrass the USA for some reason. I mean, understandable, but I, I just feel like it's just it's just really trifling. And more so, I put the blame on the judges, okay? Because why are you messing the stuff up like this? The, the, you are playing with people's mental health and everything, okay? Um, that girl really, I feel so bad. What's she like, 23 years old? She had to shut down her um social media because she was getting influx of racist comments and things like that. The racism that was, and I just don't understand. She didn't do anything wrong. So why is it when something like this happened, all of a sudden, everybody want to become racist and start throwing out, you know, racially toned stuff, whatever, and just being real ignorant to the person that was done wrong. Okay. Um, in my honest opinion, Jordan Childs, and not just because she's from USA, I just feel like she deserved to have that um, medal. You know, she should have kept the medal. But, of course, 
they want to come back and say, I, 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 she going to have to get that medal up because I guess it's like a 60 second time frame after the whole thing that you can come in and, uh, you know, question stuff or whatever. And they said that she was four minutes or four seconds afterwards. So instead of it being 60, they came in 64. And I said, what the hell? And then, so they said, like, Romania got to get that medal. And I said, oh, that's what you're going to do? This happened all over the weekend. I just felt real bad. I was in the barbershop, in the barbershop. I was in the hair salon, and I was just like, oh, this is messed up. We all looking at the stuff and everything. It was just crazy. And then the U.S. Gymnastic Team Association, whatever the freak it was, they found the evidence showing that, no, 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 we did this before the 60 seconds. Why did they say, girl, the decision has been made, case closed, appeal denied, turn that record in, that metal in? I said, so y'all not even going to look at it? And then I seen something. I don't know how true this is. I seen something where they said one of the judges either is Romanian or has ties to Romania. I don't know how true that is, but if that is the case... It's some fucked up shit going on, and that person needs to be off, and I just feel like they need to call it a draw. Baby, make up two medals and give them one, you know, and honestly, no, don't do that. Just give Jordan Child her, her medal and a goddamn apology in a monetary situation, okay? Give, them, give her all of that. Shout out to Favor Flay, because y'all really embarrassed that girl. Y'all embarrass that young lady like that. And I just, I don't appreciate it. I really don't. Y'all, it's just been a lot of sore loser ass bitches that's been going on at the Olympics. Like, what's going on? Y'all coming to the, the, the main sport event of the world that happens only every four years, okay? This means that you got to put on you the thickest of thickest skins, okay? And we're going to be competing against all of the athletes all over. So, therefore, it's a possibility I'm going to get it. It's a possibility that I'm not. You can't throw no damn fit because you didn't get it. Um, girl, please, just like I'm still mad at that boxer bitch, okay? And I'm sorry to say it like that. I'm still mad at that boxer lady for doing that and, and, and causing this uproar for Iman Khalif because after all of this stuff, you still got Trump, you got Elon, all of these people just still misgendering her still misgendering her and still referring to her as a trans woman, but in a derogatory sense, you know, and I'm just like, why would you do that? Why are you doing that? You know, and I've heard that she's suing both of them or filing something against both of them for doing that and J.K. Rowling, because you know J.K. Rowling can't stand the trans people. And I was just like, girl, ain't nobody done nothing to you. Who would have thought that that bitch would have turned out to be the way that she is? That was something I wasn't expecting when all that mess came out. I mean, I know that it's a lot of people that got a lot of stuff that, you know, they want to keep under wraps and they probably feel some type of way. But they, in public, you know, to protect their image, they probably just, you know, go along with what everybody else is doing and get along with everybody. But then behind closed doors, it's a whole totally different. J.K. Rowling, you should have stayed like that because you just fucking up your legacy. You are messing it up, girl. You turned out to be very hateful. That's crazy because what these people did to you? Absolutely nothing. They are not affecting you at all. That's I just don't understand the concept of hate. I really don't. Because you really are wasting your time focusing on people or a thing that really is not affecting you and you're taking precious minutes away from your life and precious time that you cannot get back hating and just being ignorant like when you could be doing something more productive i just don't believe in all of that you know what i'm saying i don't but shout out to favor flay you know who would have thought favor flay would have really been an mvp of the olympics because that man really been out there and he really been doing it he said don't worry about it jordan i'll get you a medal girl he got a, um a necklace a bronze little bronze diamond out necklace that it was a little gaudy for my taste but it was the thought that count you know, and I was like, oh, one of the athletes was saying how they weren't able to pay either for their um, rent or whatever because of the school wasn't helping or something like that. And Faithful Flay said, listen, just cat, uh, uh, DM me, out, give me your cash out, I'll sell all that stuff, I'll take care of it. And he did. Girl, what? Where is mine? <laughs> Wait, I need some assistance, okay? I need some assistance. Like, come on. Like, everybody does. But that was really nice of him. Let me tell you something. I don't know how they do these judges, and I don't know how they pick them, right? But we coming over, the Olympics is coming over here in four years. 
Um, don't bring them judges. Do not bring them judges. We got to get a new set. We got to get a new set. They got to be thoroughly vetted. Y'all got to be on y'all P's and Q's and y'all got to dot the I's and cross the T's because we can't have no more mistakes just like y'all did today. And also, let's get up into this. What the hell was that breakdancing shit? Now, when I heard that they was going to do breakdancing, I thought that people was lying. I thought they was just like, uh-huh, they might as well put breakdancing in there. And to see it actually go on, I said, what? And I understand that some people feel like, girl, this ain't no sport or whatever. But if you think about it, the real breakdancers, the stuff that their bodies go through and the twists, the turns, is damn near gymnastics a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because they be doing flips. They be doing slides. They be doing splits. You know, they be doing all of that. They be, you know, balancing. And it takes your core muscles, your biceps, your triceps. It takes all of that, right? I put that out there because we do got some great ass uh, break dancers and all of that stuff. And I just felt totally disrespected as an American where break dancing and all of that came from. A black American as that. This is our culture. Black and brown, bitch. We came up with that. New York, y'all stand up. Oh, okay. Y'all did that. Y'all did that. And then you're going to bring that shit over there to goddamn the Olympics and you're going to have this bitch from Australia, Miss Ren Guy. Girl, Miss Renny Ren, you should have ran your ass back home. You should have stayed your ass at the crib. What was this, okay? Let me tell you something. I just feel like this was disrespectful as hell. I feel like she was making a mockery of black folks. She was making a mockery of brown folks and all of us in our culture who came up with breakdancing. That's just how I feel. I could be doing a little bit much, but I just feel that way. Because how dare you get up there? Now, how the hell did she get through? That's what I want to know. See, this is how I know the Olympus was just fucked up, okay? Because how did that bitch get through? How did she get through when it was so many other talented people? And I said, where are the niggas at? Where are the black folks? I think at least one. You know, you got some blacks, you got some Latinos, and you got some Asians. They know how to get down sometimes, okay? Where was they at? Put the focus on them. That bitch came up there, and she was playing games with us. I'm sitting here like, is this a goddamn skit? When she got on that floor, and she did like this on the floor, and then she turned around and did <laughs> When she did the twirl on the floor and then she stopped like this, the old school, uh, uh, I said, bitch, if you don't get your ass up and stop playing with me, you look like you need to be at home changing somebody diapers or, or waiting for your kid to get out of third grade. That's what you look like you need to be. You look like Susie Homemaker up here trying to do something different and just say, oh, I can do that too. No, bitch. And then to come to find out talking about something, she got a PhD up in breakdancing. What? You could do that? What type of courses is they doing over there up in Australia? What I mean, over here in the U9, they got courses on Beyond. So, I mean, I guess we can <laughs> get the take. But, I mean, come on. Are you serious? Are you serious? 36, 37 years old, and you got your ass over here playing games. Playing games. And I sent the person that she uh, went against that, got, that lost to her. And I said, now, how the fuck did you get here over her? She didn't mess it up so bad that the Olympus said, oh, I have a thought. Let's bring in breakdancing. Oh, you see what this bitch did and you see the commentary? She just made a mockery. Don't bring that shit back and it's not coming back to 2028. You know what? And that's so effed up because it's coming to us. We would have shut it down. You know, you could have got some people off of TikTok. They would have killed it for real. And this girl just messed it up. Like, girl, take your ass back over there with your tarantulas. Oh, I don't want to say because y'all know, and that ain't trying to be rude, okay? I'm not, y'all just know that Australia is one of those places that I really do not want to go to, okay? I would like to see that opera house or whatever, but I see it on the slides and I see it on the internet because one thing about it, actually, is not flying over there to Australia. First of all, I feel like it'd be a 30-hour uh, plane ride. That's one, and I'm not going to do that, okay? Second of all, I ain't got time to be looking at Big ass spiders and all these other type of things. It's like everything over there in Australia is magnified and it's like a hundred times bigger. I don't want to see that. I am scared of shit like that. Okay. I don't like bugs. I don't I don't like creepy crawlies. I don't like stuff that I know. I don't want to come across a kangaroo that might whoop my ass because they just so combative. They really combative. They be angry as hell. They be like, bitch, why the fuck are you here? I don't know. I don't know. You right. Let me go. 
Okay, that's just it. I ain't got time for it. But um, shout out to my Australian people. No shade to you, but y'all gotta come over here. I can't go over there. Moving on from that. Um. Anyway, moving on from that. They are really pissing me off. I hope you cannot hear this shit, but they are really pissing me off. It's like y'all probably can't hear, but I can hear, and it's irking me. You know, no shade to God, love them, praise them, but how come you can't do that at your church? Why do you have to come at the end? Like, girl, it, it is 7 o'clock. It is 7.19. People literally just got off of work. We don't want to hear that. Okay, we want to hear that. We're going to put on some gospel records within our own that we want to hear who can actually sing. Not y'all out here talking and playing games on that mic, okay? Out here having gospel karaoke hour. Anyway, whoo, Lord have mercy. Moving on from that, um, let's talk about this Carisha interview. So, Carisha, aka Miss Young Miami, she alluded and put a little tease out, said, uh, should I bring Carisha please back? And then next thing you know, she got a trailer putting out about the interview that she's going to be doing with um, Saucy Santana as the host and asking her all of the questions. And was like, this is the interview that you want to see. And I mean, they hyped it up like it was really going to be something. Honestly, I really feel as though the interview was pointless. Nothing was said that we didn't already know or didn't already assume, right? The only thing that I feel like people really, truly wanted to tune in for, and then I knew it wasn't going to be nothing because it was only 33 minutes. It was only 33 minutes. And I was just like, huh, we're not going to get nothing out of this. All right. And then you got Saucy. And I understand the fact that she probably got him because that is her best friend. And they do have this really fun dynamic. I love them together. I really do. They are hilarious together. But at the same time, I understand that she probably feels comfortable with him. But I feel like because of that comfortability, he's not going to go in and ask the real questions or a badger it, you know, and not, not necessarily badger, it, but call it out and be like, nah, come on, let's do it. Like, uh, uh, no, 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 we can't let you skate free from this or whatever. But on the other hand, like I said, he did do a good job of making her feel comfortable. And I do understand why she got him because again, this is something that, you know, would be a little touchy. One of the main things that people wanted to talk about, well, the, the two things out here, the two things that the interview talked about, her relationship with Diddy and her relationship with JT. Now, people was feeling some type of way about her answer with Diddy and, you know, Santana had asked, how did you feel about everything that was going on and that has been coming out against him and all of that? And basically what she said is, that's not her experience, so she can't speak on that. That's not the Diddy that she experienced, okay? So that's basically it. She was like, she got with the man. They was cool. She was helping him, you know, build his business up, get his business out there, you know, um, making that tequila. What is it? What is De Leon tequila? Baby, who the hell is out here drinking De Leon? Even now, okay? She said, I made that pop or whatever. They basically was using each other, you know? For business and that's what we already knew they was having sex and they was using each other for business and then i guess feelings did get involved because at one point she did say that she loved him he loves her whatever and he was different with her he she basically said everything that's coming out about him she never experienced that and we understand that and we get that and i knew that that's what she was going to say but at the end of the day people are getting upset and, and coming at people that's saying okay well you still could have said more about it why y'all getting upset? Because even though she's saying that, yeah, she didn't experience that, you can also come out and say, which is her truth, which is her truth. If she said she didn't experience it, she didn't experience it. He probably could have changed at that point because he owed the shit. Who knows? I don't know. I just feel like at this point, he probably wouldn't have poured that shit on Miami because Miami, baby daddy probably would come and fuck his ass up and probably find Diddy in somebody's car, you know, just bent out, uh, bent out of shape. I was who doing the bending, bitch? Ain't nobody bending me over. Are you gay? That's the only thing I got out of um, Four Color Girls. I never watched that shit again, but that's the only thing that I got, okay? Mm -mm. Somebody had to remind me. I was looking at something. Some, uh, uh, what is it? Anina Noki Rose. 
baby, when she was up in there and they said, yeah, remember when she got, I said, what? Yeah, absolutely not. I'm not going to go back and watch it, okay? It's been so long, and I never, and I said, no, no, no. I remember two things. That scene with Janet and Omar, okay? Or I should say, uh, what's his name? Chadwick. And when um Michael Ealy and them eyes threw them baby out the window, bet. It went from comedy to real serious at the same time. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why would you do that? Michael Ewey has been the devil ever since. Ever since. Tyler Perry has a way of turning people into devils. I'm just saying, like, I cannot look at him the same. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And then, look, he's been playing that character ever since. Because look at him on power. Just an asshole. But anyway, and he's a good actor, too. He just, oh, the roles that he take. He could be playing... You playing the nicest person, the goodest Samaritans of all Samaritans, and I still be like, asshole. <laughs> Shouldn't have threw them damn babies out the window. Like, the fuck was you thinking? Lock his ass up. But anyway, yeah, my thing is, I feel like the people that had an issue with her response to how she was with Diddy and all of the allegations against him, I feel like people have a right to feel that way. Because even though you didn't experience anything, I think what people are trying to get at is how do you feel about the allegations that have been coming out? How do you feel about seeing that this is the person that you was with and then you saw that video, you know? And yeah, you should put out how you feel about everybody turning on you and, you know, associating you with him and having you be a part of stuff. And, and Carisha, you know, I understand that she was saying, like, when all of this went down, people kind of turned their backs on her and everything. But you kind of gave into it a little bit and implied it, it gave off the feeling like you was doing some stuff with him, too. You know, they bringing up old tweets or whatever, like when she was going back and forth with his ex and talking about if um, Diddy wanted me to, uh, wanted you, I, I could get Diddy to make you suck me off or some shit like that or whatever. That didn't help, you know. And then that little ride um, lawsuit coming out that had her cousin involved in it as well. Girl, it, it, it just didn't look right. You know, then they alleged that she was, you know, transported, had the, what is the pink cocaine and all that stuff. Yeah, it just didn't look right. People probably, people was looking for her to go deeper into it. That's probably what the issue was. And I said, looking at the time of it and looking at who was interviewing her, you were not about to get no Oprah-esque, no Sally, Jaffra, uh, Sally Jesse Raphael-esque no um larry king-esque okay you wasn't finna go deep you wasn't finna go deep we stay very surface she said bitch at the end of the day that wasn't my life okay i did not experience that but i get it and her answer wasn't wrong i just wish she would have been like you're not with this man anymore and i feel that she probably didn't go that far because she probably still got some contact with him and she didn't really want to put out there that you know Oh, what he did was fucked up and all that stuff and woo woo woo. Because then that probably would have been like really completely done. But anyway, I don't know. Like, how did y'all feel about the answer? Was you satisfied with the answer? At the end of the day, I was satisfied with it. You want to know why? Because I didn't expect her to come out and say anything that's like trashing him or nothing. I didn't expect her to say nothing. Y'all probably did, but I didn't. And then you get into the whole thing with the JT and them. Basically, what we already knew and what we already been seeing. City Girls is over with. They grew apart. They were going on different paths. And that's just what it is. And then for Carisha to put out the, you know, because they was like, why had, why didn't you, like, step in or do anything, you know, when Cardi and her was going against each other? She said, listen, when I said I had just woke up, I literally just woke up and I seen what was going on. I had to go back and look. And she was like, well, they arguing over a song or some shit like that. Baby, when Cardi called that girl in prison hands <laughs> they was tearing each other up <laughs> i ain't even gonna lie baby she got it she got it she got it she got it that was a fun time i said you know and that stuff just came out of nowhere and i really feel like i don't know wasn't it something where i think cardi you know mistook something or uh uh took something that really didn't mean or whatever because i think jt was trying to say that ain't even what it was. And then it just got real deep or whatever. I don't know. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. But that relationship is really messed up and gone. And that's too bad because Cardi helped them get their number one, one of their biggest hits while JT was in prison. And um, 
help keep the city girls out there with that single. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's too bad that their relationship got messed up in the midst of all of this and then over this whole stuff with Nicki Minaj. Like, at the end of the day, who gives a shit? But Carisha said, bitch, y'all arguing over a song that I didn't even know that was happening and that I didn't even know that she was going to be on because ain't nobody tell me nothing. Shit, who got left off of Bad and Bougie? You know that whole Migos thing. I was just like, well, I and, and it was controversy about that. I'm like, y'all just want to make issues where it's really, y'all, it's, y'all making it a little bit too deep than what it is. At the end of the day, yes, I would feel some, if I'm in a group and I'm with my homegirl and I find out through other means and not you directly that you are finna be doing something else with somebody else and you didn't even tell me and I have to find out elsewhere with everybody else with the public, yeah, I'm gonna feel some type of way, okay? I'm gonna feel some type of way. But at the end of the day, if I really love you and I really got this deep friendship and this deep connection with you, I am not gonna bring our issues to the internet. That's one thing Carisha said, once it comes to the internet, you know, the relationship will never be the same. And I truly understand that, but y'all both are to blame on that because y'all both was throwing shade at each other and y'all fell into that trap and y'all let the fans hype y'all up and get up into y'all feelings, especially JT, because most of them fans was like, you see when she be getting into it with people, um, your Miami don't ever be coming to her defense. She don't ever be doing this. She don't ever be doing that. And it's just like, y'all fans need to leave people alone and just let these people handle that shit themselves. Get about these people business. Well, I can't say get about their business because y'all put it on display. Y'all put it out there so you can't say, stay up out my business and all of that stuff. We'll keep it off the fucking internet and we won't say nothing. But at the same time, some of these fans, y'all need to know when to take a step back and just let these people who've known each other for years figure that shit out themselves. Y'all don't need to offer y'all input, but that's asking too much, okay? Because y'all know it's not going to happen. That's just too much life right, you know? So... She said it ain't good, but it ain't bad. So basically, they're neutral. And it's one of those situations where the friendship is not really the friendship anymore. They still family, but you know, that's one of those distant family members that you don't kick it with like that no more. She's over there in Miami, JT over there in California and all that stuff. And it is what it is. I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't get the big hoo-ha like that wasn't a real revelation because we saw it. We saw it. It is what it is. And that's all that I got out of it. And the fact that, you know, Miami, she really is trying to find herself. I really do feel like she lost and she's still in the process of trying to find herself again because she did talk about her mental health and her being depressed and just, you know, not knowing herself and not feeling herself like she used to when all of this stuff went down with the Diddy and everything, you know, feeling like everybody turned against her. And, you know, I I understand it and I can see that even with her talking about it, you can see that she's a little bit different, you know, but she was like, um, the new music, she was having issues putting out the new music because um, QC said that basically her music hasn't matured or whatever, or it wasn't ready. It hasn't. At the end of the day, I didn't even realize that Carisha was just going to stay in the music business once her and JT um, broke up because I just feel like, wasn't it that it was JT that really wanted to be the rapper? Carisha can't rap for shit. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's just, Carisha is fun and everything, but the lady can't rap for shit, and she knew that, and that's why she said she ventured off, ventured off, and did other stuff. Okay, so you got to get your money how you got to get your money. Other than that, I don't know what else we need to talk about that. Okay, I don't get you know Stan's gonna hype stuff up more than it need to be, but there is that. Y'all can tell me how y'all felt about it. Was you cool with it? Did you want it more? Was you satisfied? Did, did did you even give a damn? Because honestly, I did it. I don't understand how. And this, if Carisha, please come back for real, for real, please. Like, I, I don't listen to podcasts that only brings around six episodes in 365 days. I can't do it. And this was a leap year, 366. No, no. My, my podcast got to be consistent, bitch. One episode a week, I can deal with that. Okay, you ain't got to do two episodes a week. You can do one episode a week. All right, because the podcasts that I listen to, when they be off and they don't come back on the time that they become, they supposed to come back. But I know, baby, it throws me off because I put that in my schedule, and that's how I be getting. I listen to my podcast while I'm at work, get my stuff done. I be listening to it, getting all cleaning and all that stuff. Girl, don't throw me off like that. That and that's why people had an issue when Carisha Please was winning stuff. 
It was like, how was the best podcast when it's only been like a couple of episodes and you got other podcasts that have been out here that are way more consistent and way more. Uh, but hey, it's what it is. We already know why. But moving on from that. Mm. Um, Kaylani, girl. <laughs> At this point, you know, it is not funny. It is not funny. It is actually sad that this is going on, the time that it's going on. And it's like ever since that picture between that picture with her and Chris Brown came out, everything has been going to hell. And I'm not saying that it has anything to do with her. I'm I'm not saying that that's the reason. I'm just saying ever since then, it ain't been looking good for her because that was the first thing. That was the first incident. And next thing you know, her baby daddy come out trying to say that she in a cult. You know, she doing this religious stuff. She putting the child in harm's way. Then, you know, she come out saying, this ain't that, this ain't that. He lying and all that stuff. Then they come out saying that the man was living up in a house and, you know, all of this. I was like, wait a minute. So you trying to get custody, but you lived up in the house? What are you, what if this going on? It was a lot. Everything that keep on coming out is just like this, 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 this. And I'm getting so much information that I did not think that I needed to know. And I don't, I'm not sure I want to know all of this. Okay. Because I'm sitting here like, whoa. And honestly, when you look at Kaylani and the way that she's been moving and her mental space, she does have mental health illness, right? Issues. You know, I think she's bipolar or something like that. She spoke on it. I think others spoke on it. Um, but at the same time, because she was talking about her meds and all of that stuff on some interview that I saw uh, where she was promoting her current album. Baby, ain't nobody talking about that album and she is on tour or she's about to start a tour. And at this point in time, I just feel sorry for everybody the opening acts and all of that because this probably was their breakout thing or whatever. You're on this big tour with this artist or whatever. And, you know, before it can even get up off the ground, all of this controversy is happening and stuff just keep coming out. And regardless of whether it's true or not, it's going to affect her in the most negative way. Because I, that man, at first, I'm looking at it like, you know, okay, I can see some of this happening, but I don't see her putting her, her, her daughter in harm's way. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, when he said, I didn't say this to TMZ, or why would TMZ try to say that it's a sex code? I didn't call it that. And woo, woo, woo. But I'm like, okay. And she, he was like, I'm not going to speak nothing else about it. This is a private matter. Okay, fine. And then it was given, are you doing this because you just need some money? You broke or whatever. That's what I was thinking also. But then this come out. And at first, what, what sparked this? Because prior to this, it was other people that had dealt with her in her past that was coming out saying basically how she... It was weird. It was weird. I don't even want to go through it. But some girl, you know, she was on hospice and Kalani got friends with her and she was trying to get her to be her power of attorney and she was picking out her funeral clothes once she died. I was like, what? And they was talking about how she'd be having her friends stalking her and all this stuff and, you know, trying to shut them up. And it's just a lot of mess. And I'm just like, what is happening? I was so confused. I said, now, how did we get from point A to point D? What happened with BC? What happened with that? I was so confused. I'm missing a couple of steps, you know? And then we get to this where recently, I think it was a couple of days ago, Kaylani had came out or a report had came out on TMZ and all that stuff saying that she had filed a restraining order against the baby daddy, right? And was alleging that he is abusive to him, was abusive to her, okay? And again, she goes by her and they pronouns, so I'm not misgendering or anything, right? So, um, yeah, she did all that, right? And I said, oh, so y'all was whooping each other. What I got from that is they was, they, was, they was doing the same thing to each other. That's how I look at it, okay? They was putting hands. I don't, I'm not even going to say putting hands. They probably was verbally abusive to each other. That's just what it was, okay? Um, and that happens. It's unfortunate, but I can believe that. You know what I'm saying? Because next thing you know, she, what, what, what? She put that out. And she wanted that restraining order and all this stuff. And, you know, he comes out and basically said, I'm going to put some shit out. OK. And she, he was texting. He put some text messages out and he put something out where she, he told her, you better retract 
that uh, statement or whatever that you sent to TMZ and all of that information and all that stuff before I put out the real because you know I know everything. And next thing you know, Kaylani puts up in her IG story, I did not talk to TMZ. I, what it, let me let me find exactly because I, I had to print this shit out for you all, babe. I had to print it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, I ain't printed out. <laughs> but anyway, she basically said, girl, I ain't say that shit to TMZ. Okay, I did not do that. I did not do that at all. They, they, um, they lied. They lied. They lied. Okay, I did not speak to them. I didn't tell them nothing or whatever. And so basically that was a retraction of all of that stuff. And I said, damn. Now once that happened, and I saw the messages where he said retract, and then because we, I saw that before those messages came out. And I was just like, oh, wow. You want to hear some of the messages that was going on? You got, you know, he said, Kaylani busted through her own door because at one point, let me read what it said. <clears throat> and the complaint read, okay. The fight ensued because Kaylani Singer, well, Kaylani, Reportedly questioned why he filed for public assistance. You mean to tell me he filed for public assistance? See, this is what it is. It's giving like, you know, um, at first it was going after money. You know, so she was like, well, let me get to tell you from the beginning. Page six obtained the court documents and reported that the singer confessed that young slash white was abusive for years. But they chose to file a restraining order in mid-June after he allegedly became enraged and smashed through their locked bedroom door in a fit of anger. And at that time, he reportedly was staying with her and their five-year-old daughter. And they said that the fight had ensued because Kaylani had questioned why he filed for public assistance. While he was living with them, the documents state that he was smoking marijuana every day, all day, and consuming psychedelics. They also accused um, him of disappearing for lengthy periods of time and lacking personal hygiene and self-care. Now, let me tell you this. Kaylani, I'm not saying that you lying and I'm not saying that you put this out here, but if this is true that you did say and he did say retract it, you got me looking at you funny and I'm going to tell you why. Because that whole thing about he always smoking marijuana and psychedelics, you literally said up in the interview why you was on this um, press tour or whatever. You was going to radio stations, radio stations that I watched. Say that you still smoke a lot of weed. You don't do the mother drugs, and you do do a little bit of psychedelics, okay? You do a little shrooms and all that stuff, right? So, y'all probably was doing it together. You probably don't do nothing else, but baby, you smoke the weed too, okay? So, you know, hmm. But Nina said, the complaint said, if he has our daughter in his care, she is returned filthy and reeking of marijuana. Now, see, I don't like that, you know what I'm saying? Do You do what you do, but don't do it around the kids. Don't do it around the kids, okay? Um, when describing his behavior, the singer put in the filing, he is not emotionally well and appears to suffer from periods of despair and often tirades of uncontrollable anger, anger and rage. When he is agitated, he cannot stop moving and throws his arms in the air while yelling and screaming at me, often throwing items and um, calling me horrible names. Oh, yeah, this is the retraction she put out there. I did not make a statement, nor did I tell TMZ about my business. That's the retraction, right? And my whole thing of it is, so a lot of the stuff that she's accusing him of, she has the same thing. Because she has spoken on, like they both dealing with mental health issues. She's spoken on her mental health as well. And I feel like, again, y'all are weaponizing mental health. And I just don't like it. I don't understand what the theme of it is. Like, People have been playing with mental health for the past week, and I don't get it. I don't get it. Tamar, woo, that bitch. Anyway, fuck that. So these text messages that he put out, he basically said, remember I just read that she found that, um, you know, he gets mad and busted through that door and all that stuff. He said she was the one that busted through her own door, okay, and was abusing him. She the text message of her keep on you know texting him until he answers and all that stuff. Um, and then he said, I begged you to leave me alone. I begged you that I didn't want to speak. 
I ran from your room into the back house. You followed me and barged through the door. I asked you repeatedly that I did not want to talk to you. You said you had to speak to your co-parent. I ran into the bathroom. I said, no, I don't. Please stop. I said, please leave me alone because I knew what you was about to do. I said, I am packing and you kept coming and wanted us to be homeless in the morning? What? I said, oh my God, this is a telling fella. It's not funny. It's not funny. But I'm just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because why are y'all doing this? Why are we involved? And then she said on another slide, I had cut off communication, contact with her last month because of her abuse. When um, and how she alleges abuse when she is scared, okay? This is another text message. Bear with me, y'all. I've decided I'm never speaking to you privately again. I'm asking to set up communications with her daughter completely separate from any direct communications with you. You're trying to set boundaries accordingly, allegedly. That's a liability to my safety because of your lying ability. We know what you lied about, down to your little burner accounts. Don't care to rehash. That's the thing for you. That's your thing. And anything, and everything you claim I lied about, I have 100% physical proof of. I'll take all her scheduling update, talking about the daughter, through my email. There's no reason to speak with my fatherly rights. I'll be having someone contact her school directly for all the updates about her. I'm asking to go no contact with you specifically because I've recognized a real pattern of different forms of abuse since I was 20 years old, freshly homeless, fleeing another dangerous situation to your couch at Sycamore Avenue. You confidently and conveniently always leave that part out. Mind you, this was Sunday, July 7th, 8 o'clock in the morning. Then... Another text, which this is the part that really got me, and this is the part that really had me saying, like, Kalani, if this is true, you fucked up in the head, and you are wrong as shit. Because I remember when she was with this ex-girl, okay, her name was Kiara. And uh, and the only reason why I know about it, not because I was following, because they kept popping up on my For You page on um, Tiki Top, right? And they was together. She played basketball and all that stuff, right? And all of a sudden, they broke up. They was like hanging so tough, and everybody was so in love with them. Oh, she got a tight too. Um, and you know, next thing you know, they broken up. And I was just like, oh. And then it comes out saying that she was married. Y'all didn't know that too, right? And Lonnie was married for like a couple of months, and then they got that shit and all. Mind you, the lady that she got married to works at Parkwood. And I said, excuse me. She basically said she was used. Kaylani said she was um. She got into the marriage by accident. <laughs> it was method acting or something like that. And baby, I would have knocked that hoe out. I'm so sorry. You did what? You did what? <laughs> Don't tell me no shit like that. But um, these other text messages said the blurred out ones is the person that gave the information, the closure that she needed. Um, this is talking about. I think this is her, uh, Javon and Kiki. Yo, I just talked to so and so. I just talked to Blank, and I pray that this girl get what she deserved. She heard way too many good people, and she needs to be held accountable for everything, whatever we have to do. Um, and then the response was, yeah, I'm sorry, too. I know it's rough to hear it all at the same time as it is enlightening. Yeah, she's trying to bullshit her way through all of this, but I genuinely don't think it'll work. She's left a bad mark on too many people, and not saying they will, but... Stand your ground if her or her people around her try to come and manipulate you. Stay calm because they like to provoke people. Mind you, he winds up saying, meanwhile, I spoke to Kiara. This is her. I know the truth of what they did to that girl is sad. And I don't care if they silence her. They won't do it to me. Basically said, when she cheated on her last girlfriend, Kiara, she alleged that the person she was cheating with our word her and Kiara later found out that that wasn't true. She alleges that she alleges our word and abuse when she has nothing else to do to cling to. I also heard that the person that she cheated on her with was Jossie, Jossie, the producer girl that, you know, J-O-Z-Z-Y, the stud, 
that's up in the industry. She was on Diddy's Love um, album and his label at one point. Mm-hmm. And fucked her over too. I said, this don't make no sense. And now he said that everything else he'll, he'll address later and put out there. This is ridiculous, okay? I know I probably spent a little bit too much time on this, but I had to get the uh, information out for the people because y'all don't really need to go see all this. I just give it to you so y'all cannot waste your time. But I'm just sitting here like, why is all of this happening? Baby, what did Kalani do to bring all of this up right here and right now? Because why now? Why now, baby? I would have been exposed to this. If it's, I ain't saying, you know, that it didn't happen and people got to move at their own time. But a bitch like me, but I ain't finna be put through all this shit. I'm exposing, okay? I'm exposing, I'm putting it out there, bitch. Okay, we're going to the courts. We're going to the courts. That's just what it is, all right? But um, anyway, I'll tell you how y'all feel about it. Do y'all even give a damn? Let me talk about mental health. Tamar Braxton. I did a video about this yesterday, about this bitch just being, and, and I'm sorry, I, I when I tell you, <clears throat> I don't have respect. I literally don't have respect. And at this point, somebody said in my comments, when she put that post out there about how, oh, see, y'all only post stuff about me when it's negative, and y'all did exactly what I thought. I'm still with Jeremy. Y'all want me to fail. Y'all want this man to break up with me and want me to be sad. How come a person can't be healthy and healed and all that stuff? Let me tell you this. Somebody said it's a possibility that she probably did crash out, and she just trying to make up an excuse. Okay, like all of that, she meant exactly what she said when she tweeted that other stuff about, you know, her being sad, her man breaking up with her, um, the family being awful to her, being toxic. It's so crazy how a toxic bitch can call another toxic bitch toxic, but can't admit to themselves that they toxic as shit. I used to be one of those ones that was blind and be like, you know, maybe it is the family, maybe it's the family, blah, 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 blah. You're part of it. You're part of it. And I'm not saying this to get people to be like, oh, well, F. Tamar, whatever, because you can still like her. That's fine. I don't I don't have a problem with that. That's not what it is. I'm just calling stuff out. Like, it's, it's, it's too much. And it's been going on too long. It's been going on too long. And I don't know if the bitch is really spiraling because now she on there putting up cash out, asking her friends for cash out to show this how this how I see if you love me or whatever. I'm like, what the hell is this? My friend sent me that. Keon just stop sending me shit. <laughs> Cause I, I don't follow that lady for a reason. Okay. Because I don't want to see it. If I see something about that woman, it's only because it either got on the shade room, the neighborhood talk, or Keon just sent it to me. And I'll be sitting here like, what? What? Or somebody else sends it to me. I'm not gonna put that stuff out there. And I know some stuff that's uh, a little deeper than that, but bitch. You spiraling out. It ain't a good look. And all of this stuff is ugh, just to get a fucking record out. And you want to know what's going to happen? It's going to flop. You want to know why? Because ain't nobody going to give a damn. Because they're going to remember all the shit that you keep on doing. And like I said again, this is not the way to do it. This is not the way to promote shit. This is not the way to get people attention. And you want to say, oh, yeah, they only do this because they put negative stuff out. You only post about Because, bitch, you only give us negative stuff. You don't even give us time to get to the positive stuff. God damn, she makes me so mad because I know where she could have been. Mm. Mm. Anyway, moving on from that. What the hell? Oh, somebody gonna be like, Ashley, you just this girl. I don't give a good goddamn. I said what I said, and you can feel how you feel. It ain't gonna change how I feel. So, oh, whatever. Moving on from that. Um, let's talk about a little politics, just slightly. Isaac Hayes estate. And his son, Isaac Hayes the third, they is suing Trump and his people because they are tired of them using their daddy's song. They are tired of them using their daddy's song uh, at, the, at his rallies and stuff. He said, bitch, we don't want to have any association with you and you did not get permission. So therefore, we are suing your ass and we had already told you and told you multiple times not to use our shit. And so you want to play these games? So now I'm going to sue you for copyright infringement and all this other stuff. For three million dollars, and I said, you know what? You're probably not gonna get it, but you're making a point, and I'm all the way here for it. I'm all the way here for it. And you want to know what else that I just don't understand? I don't know if y'all been keeping up with it, but it's been some mess that's been going on with um, TikTok uh, with the pro-Palestine people just coming at Black folks, mainly African American folks, because you know 
getting upset with people who said that they are, you know, fighting in, in on the side of Palestine and they're going to vote for Kamala, right? Um, and it's just like, why are you upset? And most of the people that's doing this and causing this division and all this stuff, they're not even U.S. citizens. They over there in Europe or somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting here like, so you're blaming one person for something and you're acting as if this one person can do and end this whole thing. We want it to end. We want to cease fire. We want, you know, safety to be had in Palestine and Gaza, all that stuff. We want that, right? Because we're tired of the injustices that they're going to. We get it. But at the same time, you're getting upset because they're talking about the fact that there's more than one genocide situation that's going on in the world. And we're talking about what's going on in Congo, what's going on in Haiti, what's going on in Sudan, right? And mainly, it's coming off very anti-Black because you're basically coming off as if those don't matter and just what's happening in Palestine does. And it's like, so one girl talked about something, basically it's our fault, the African-Americans. I'm just sitting here like, what is going on? How did we get involved in this? And how did it become our fault, okay? At the end of the day, I just want to put this out here because it just don't make sense to me why you're blaming a group of people for this and that as if we have the power to do something about it. I just want y'all to understand. The mess that's been going on between Israel and Palestine has been going on for decades, okay? For decades. Even if we do come in and all of a sudden the U.S. of A stands on everything, changes because USA has dealings with Israel. Just want y'all to know that. Always has, okay? That's why, you know, the people get mad because of what's going on. I understand. But you really think, I'm just saying, you really think that just because a president, our president of our country, or potential president was to say ceasefire and all this stuff, that Palestine and Israel, they're going to cease fire? Absolutely not. It's not up to us. We can put it out there, which we have and which Kamala has, okay? Um, you can put that out there, but it's up to Israel. It's up to them to actually do it. They can't force it. And with all of the dealings that they have, this country has with Israel, it's not going to happen. It's going to continue. I just want y'all to understand that. So it don't matter who we get in office, whether it's VP, whether it's 45, it's still going to go on. We can't stop it. We can protest about it. We can bring up the issue. And people have been talking about it for decades. Okay? And unfortunately, nothing has changed because they are so strong in their stance. That's just what it is. And therefore... You know, let's put some more attention, equal attention on other genocides. And it's coming off like, you know, people don't understand that. And then you got people saying, oh, don't vote for her. Okay, because of her stance or whatever. But do you not understand that if you don't vote for her, at least she will sit or attempt to say that she's going to, you know, listen and that she does want to cease fire and all of that stuff. Whereas the other op op alternative is what? Trump, do y'all know that that man don't give a shit about Palestine? He will wipe that thing out if he want. This is the person that put the um the ban, the Muslim ban out there. He wants all y'all out the country, okay? And so you want that to be, oh, you're going to be really shit out of luck, okay? He's not going to listen at all, you know? So it's just like, ugh. I don't know. You can't please people, and it's so much deeper and I just need people to stop placing blame on this and placing blame on that because that is not what it is. We don't need that. We don't need that. And, 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 and we got to also be able to take care of home too before we can take care of anybody else. And But yet we still trying to be taking care of everybody else as well. And then you get shitted on for that. It's just crazy. I say y'all be coming up with the dumbest. Y'all be coming up with the most idiotic stuff to just be mad at. And your points don't be making sense to me. I'm like, what? That was our fault. It's my girl. Who the fuck are you? Moving on from that, Blue Face, he in jail for five more years, or I should say four years. Now, I don't know if it's four years minus the time served, 
that he already been up in there, but he gonna be in there for at least another two years. Okay, that's just what it is. And the people's is feeling some type of way. Because Krishan is a possibility that she's going to be over there in Oklahoma for that uh, drug charge and that warrant or whatever that she had. She's facing up to eight years in prison. And at the end of the day, I don't feel bad for neither one of them. The only person that's suffering in this whole situation is that baby. I hope that baby is with somebody that actually gives a damn about it, about the child, about him, and that's giving him the love that he needs and the care that he needs, okay? Because neither parent really was. Neither parent really was. All right? And I just feel bad that that baby was born to those assholes, to those ingrates, to those insufferable ass people that child made famous for what? And you want us to feel you know, like people go so hard. People really go so hard for them. And I just don't understand what the fuck do they do? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Wow. <laughs> Great example for the people and for the kids, you know? Come on. They getting exactly what the fuck they deserve, okay? Too much bad behavior, now they finally suffering the consequences for their bad behavior instead of it always being uplifted like it's been. And speaking of bad behavior, bitch, can we talk about or I should say, speaking of jail, Woody <laughs> Call it a mistrial, okay? At this point, just call it a mistrial. The young thug, the YSL case, whatever, Woody literally got his ass up there on that stand and said, basically, um, he pinned all the crimes on young thug just to get the police to leave him alone. <laughs> I said, what? So you're doing all of this stuff. The shit that y'all was trying to say or the people was trying to say Gunner was out there doing, he the one that was really doing the shit, right? He said, to get them off of me, I said Thug did this, Thug did that, because I knew he didn't do it. And in my mind, I knew that the police would never go mess with him. It was easy for me to try and throw the blame off onto him to get them off of me. And that's why I'm doing it. Uh, it may seem like I'm trying to help Thug out. I'm not trying to help him out. I don't care nothing about him. I care about the truth. Police said they wanted a big fish. I'm a little fish. When they told me that my motive was to convince them, I'm telling the truth about the <laughs> Mind you, this motherfucker has been liked by a whole bunch of people, okay? Y'all got that man on 20 verse 1. I wish y'all need to get that get rid of that. Get rid of that dumb shit, okay? Y'all on that and, and, and just everything. And, and I bet you y'all not finna um, turn on him the way that y'all typed on Ghana. Y'all are not finna do it. Because y'all probably scared of that man. Y'all probably scared of that man, but ugh, I just really want to put out that like, girl, what? <laughs> Call it a mistrial and let that man go home, okay, at this point, because this this is just too much. This is too much. And let me ask this question. Who the hell is party next door? I hear the name. I saw the face. I don't know no, no record of his, okay? And I say that for a reason. I know somebody could be like, oh, my God, Ashley, you never heard? Absolutely not. And if I had, I didn't know that it was his and it wasn't memorable, okay? I have never sat down and said, ooh, let me listen to a party next door uh, record. And at one point, if I wanted to, I don't think I will now because why y'all keep on calling yourselves the king of R&B, okay? Somebody said he the king of R&B and he basically said, yes, I'm the king of R&B. How? <laughs> I'm so tired. You, you, you take it over from Jaquise. Okay, Jaquise just had a baby. Uh, they had a baby boy. Just want to put that out there. You might want to know. You the king of R&B. What? What? At least when Bobby Brown said it, I knew some. I, I know Bobby Brown catalog. When they say uh, uh, about Usher, I know his catalog. Uh, uh, anybody else, like, I, I know their catalog. I don't know nothing about you. I mean, somebody going to probably say, Ashley, well, we know. Well, I don't. And I'm talking about me, okay? So in my book, you're not the king of anything. And let me get to this. Lotto did a little interview or whatever. And, you know, because let's get to the albums, okay? Since we're talking about some little music and all that stuff. Lotto did an interview, and it's causing a little controversy. It's causing a little uproar, and I just don't understand. I think she was asked something, because I didn't really watch it, but this is what's been going on. She was asked, who is the GOAT of, you know, like, women hip-hop or whatever? And she said, look, Kim. And if she feels like, look, and of course, you know, because of the issues that have happened between her and Nikki, the people are pissed off about it. Her stance, in, in, in specifically, 
And I'm just like, <sighs> y'all make it so hard to really want to truly, truly love a person or like a person because y'all do too damn much. In this day and age, I just don't understand how did stand-up become the way that it came and to the point where nobody cannot mention a person when you say who's the best at this, who's the best at that. And if somebody mentions somebody that's not your fave, all of a sudden it's a problem. Now, I know I just said Party Next Door is not the king of R&B, but that's a fucking fact, okay? So that you can't compare that. But I'm just saying, like, I can't get mad if somebody don't think that Beyonce is the best singer in the world. I can't get mad because that's their opinion. And to them, she may not be, okay? I can't get mad if somebody preferred Taylor Swift over Beyonce. Bitch, I didn't listen. <laughs> I just remember. I didn't listen. I'll get back to y'all next week, okay? Because some of y'all did, you know, uh, quite a few of y'all put some song titles up in there. And I said, damn, I didn't know y'all was really like, oh, okay, I'll get back. It, it's been a stressful week, okay? It's been a stressful week. I had the weekend off, so I listen this weekend, and I'll get back to you in the next video, okay? But yeah, I'm not going to get mad at that because to them, that's people have their preferences and people like who they like. And we get that they had issues, okay? And, and I know some people trying to, you know, think, oh, she just saying it because her and Nikki got into it. Okay, that's fine. But if me and Nikki, if I got into it with somebody, I'm not going to put them out there and put them as my goat of anything. But at the end of the day, if she saying Lil' Kim is her goat, that's her goat. And in my opinion, Lil' Kim is my goat too. I, 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 I love Kim since I was a kid. The same way that this new generation and this current generation probably love Nikki as they as a kid. Everybody is not going to be here for Nikki like that or, or put her as number one like that because that's just not what it is. And it's okay. It don't mean nothing negative or whatever. It means just to that person, they prefer this person over that one. Don't mean that they don't like her. They just prefer this person over this one because this one had a greater impact on them. You know? Like in my book, if I was to ever, you ask me something like that, I'm not putting Nikki up in there like that. Yes, Nikki is very talented. She's a great, great artist. But for me, my goal would be Lil' Kim, Missy Elliott, and, and, and Foxy Brown and them. They're my, not, they're my people. Them who I go to. None of these girls at that. Like, and I love Megan. I'm, I'm not going to say no Megan. I'm not going to say no Cardi. Hell no. Okay? And I like Cardi. And I mean that with everything, bitch. I'm not going to do that. I will put Lauren Hill up there, but Lauren Hill so goddamn disappointed sometimes. I really can't believe that she tries to blame the clickbait and all this stuff for uh, talking about people be clickbaiting headlines about my tours and all that stuff about me coming out late. Bitch, you come out late all the damn time. That's why that tour did not go off with a hitch, okay? That's why I went off the rails before it even started. But y'all just be getting upset about the dumbest things, okay? And I just truly don't understand. Akbar V. Girl, you want to be with somebody so bad and you want somebody to give you so much attention or whatever. Look, you so up Nicki Minaj ass. That is fine. But at the end of the day, what they got to do with you? If she say that that's her goat, that's her goat. If you say Nicki is your goat, that's your goat. And that's just all that it is. Like, I just don't get it. It's just so idiotic. It's so childish. It's just so dumb. Wow. Are we really, are we really doing this? <sighs> Moving on. Moving on. Sweetie and YG, let it go. Let it go. To the point where y'all arguing so goddamn bad that somebody else had to call the cops and they had to come and check on you and, and, and to get y'all to calm the fuck down. I mean, at least at this point, the only thing that positive that I say I can say is at least this time we don't see you, you getting thrown in the goddamn elevator. It's, it's getting physical or nothing. Y'all just arguing because I just feel like a lot of people that judge a lot of stuff I, I, in these relationships, there's a lot of shit that probably be going down my hand close book. It's a lot of people that be like, you shouldn't be doing this because you shouldn't be doing it. And the whole time beginning y'all head busted in. And I, I hate to say that. And you be there for it, you know. But you just never know. Like, at this point, you just need to probably stop dating certain type of people, okay? It is what it is. It is I don't know what you want to say about it. How the fuck are you arguing so loud? that neighbors was concerned that they had to call the cops. <sighs> like your ass in the fucking house and go in the basement and do all that shit. God damn. And Sky Jackson, what the hell is going on with you? So she gets arrested because video camera showed her pushing her dude, right? And I think this thing, you know, that's going around on the blogs. Well, if 
you know, they be taking it light on women. They don't give the women the same, you know, treatment that they give men when it comes out about domestic abuse and all that stuff. Like, girls, stop it because they be on everybody ass these days, all right? They want to put up Megan Stallion. They want to put up Kiki. They want to put up Sky Jackson. Sky fucking got arrested and she got out. <laughs> Listen, something about that little girl, I just, she, because she forever looks like a little girl, I don't know, something about how I just, she don't have a trusted face for me, okay? But nobody is letting these people slide, okay? It is what it is. These motherfuckers that begin these incidents, they be mug shots and all that stuff. So, hey, it is what it is. And and, and it, I don't know. It, it just felt very like, you know, you want to excuse what men do, you know? And yes, I do feel as though we need to hold everybody accountable. Everybody accountable. So if she put hands on him, it was very right that she got arrested. And that's just what it is. They're going to tell them, not only did she get arrested, she's engaged to that man and she pregnant. Welcome to the Disney Channel. Here on the Disney Channel. Oh. All right. Because I don't know too much about Sky, okay? And, and a lot of the stuff that I heard about it, it's not really that good, but you know, to each his own, whatever. Moving on from that. Um, and let's just talk about it. Kiki, let me just put this out here because I've seen people, it's like when certain things come out, People be waiting. It's like y'all lurk and y'all just be sitting and wait for somebody to say, oh, I told you so. I told you so. And you don't know a damn thing and you ain't told us shit. So Kiki, a picture comes out with Kiki, her son, and her baby's father. And they look like they're okay. They look happy for the most part. And all of a sudden, you know, instantly, which I don't understand is, why did people instantly go to, oh, see, I told you it, I told you she was lying. I told you she was lying. And they back together. They back together. Who told you that she was lying? And who told you that they back together? And you got that all from a picture? Just because in the picture, she's smiling. They're all smiling and being happy while holding their baby. While showing each, the world that, oh, this is what positive co-parenting probably looks like. Do you not understand? I, I just didn't understand. Why did people jump so far to that? To that they're back together and that she lied about the abuse that happened to her. When we all saw the tape, we saw the footage, we saw everything that was going on. We saw the still shot. We saw all of it. We saw all of it. Okay? And now it's, oh, I knew she was lying. She was lying. She was lying. And now they back together. That's fucked up. How did, how, who told you that they was back together? Y'all look at a picture and y'all instantly be waiting to come out and say, I knew this bitch was lying. When, it, when, it, when a woman comes out and accuses a man of abuse of anything, y'all sit there and y'all wait for something to come out so you can be like, I knew she didn't do this. I knew he was lying. I knew she was lying on him and all that stuff. That's misogynistic as fuck. You want to act like you don't want a victim blame and yet you be lying in wait, lying in wait to do so. Because y'all instantly said they back together and she was lying. Who the fuck told you that? And why did you get that from that picture? Because they were smiling? Because they weren't cutting at each other's throat? Yeah, we saw that they went and, um, you know, was going through their shit. That was some months ago. Within a few months, they figured out that, hey, we're going to drop this restraining order because they went into mediation. Did y'all forget about that? Did y'all forget about that? They went into mediation, all right? So they dropped the restraining order. Obviously, that worked for the most part. So now we didn't calm down. We didn't talk about some shit. And now we're able to take our kid to the zoo and still show that mommy and daddy can get along for the kid. Is that a hard thing to, a hard concept to have? Is, is, is it a hard thing for people to actually co parent and co parent and look like they're okay? And because she dropped the custody suit. So that means that. I'm not finna file, you know, for a full custody. I'm gonna let you come over and have the kid and we're gonna figure this out on our own. I mean, we don't like the motherfucker, but I mean, I guess I I don't I don't I don't get that. Like y'all don't know what co-parenting is. Y'all don't know that time can heals a couple of things and people can talk about stuff. You you think that every time she's supposed to be around her baby father, they they supposed to look angry at each other, whatever, especially when the kid is right there and y'all automatically jump to she back with it. Y'all so goddamn dumb. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. And if the bullet hits you, it hits you. 
Because I don't understand how you jumped that far. And even if she is back with that man, you know in 2024 how abuse works and how there are people who get into relationships. It becomes abusive. They leave and then somehow they get right back in it with that person. And they go back and forth like that. You know that that happens. So what is the surprising? But again, who said that they are back together? Y'all don't know nothing about co-parenting? All right. Fine. Have it your way. <laughs> you know, moving on. You want to know who I'm sick of? And I thought we was done with. I thought we was done with for a minute. I really did. I really did. Until I get on the blog, I open up my um, Instagram and I'm assaulted. I am assaulted. Tyrese is looking up in the mirror and he is literally put on the lace front beard and sideburns and goatee. I was like, what the fuck is happening? With a beanie on, cock to the side. All of this just to go sing the national anthem, I think at the Rams or something. I don't know. I don't know. And he's dressed in 70s gear. And I said, what the hell is going on? And it's like he's giving ode to Marvin Gaye. You remember when Marvin Gaye sang the national anthem and he did his little twist to it? Made it real cool. Bobby as fuck, right? He wanted to do something like that. And I think he's doing a movie or whatever and he's supposed to be playing Marvin Gaye or something like that. So he decided to come out in his full regalia cosplaying as him at the anthem and all that stuff. And he was proud of himself, bitch. <laughs> he was proud and we was confused. I was just confused as the reason why he looked in that mirror. He put that piece on his um, face right here, right? That bitch was lifting. I know y'all saw that shit lifting. Go back and look at the video. It was lifting. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and he walked away. <laughs> I said, excuse me. You said, yeah, like, yeah, I did that. Let's go. No. No. It's lifting. The whole beard is lifting. And you came out there. He was. Listen, Tyrese is a, at this point in time, that man is pure comedy. I can't even get upset, bro. It ain't nothing to get upset. It's just all freaking jokes at this point. Baby, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and speaking of music, mm, so Lotto's album came out and Chloe's album came out on the same day this past Friday. Did y'all listen to it? I finally listened to Lotto because maybe, maybe Lotto album was a little long for me. No, it wasn't a little long for me. It was just, you know, I just really wasn't in the mood to listen to it. I wanted to give my full undivided attention to it. So I got to it a little late. It's it's decent. It's decent. Um, She talking about it. It's a love hip hop album. It's a love rap album. That's just what it is. Okay. Um, I don't know what else you want to say. It ain't bad. It ain't bad, but it feels a little redundant to me, but at the same time, it's not bad. It's not a bad album. So there's that. Chloe. Chloe should have named that album. I oh, let me shout out to Carrie because he said it first. But he is absolutely correct. It's Carrie on um in on Twitter and Instagram, I think. Baby, he said this album did not should not have been called Trouble in Paradise. It should have been called Pussy in Paradise. Because let me tell you, the girl is singing about fucking herself. She got a couple of self-pleasure songs on there, right? And it just, even till now, like, the girl is 26. The woman is 26 years old. And I still feel a little awkward listening to her talk about sex. Because we know her since she was a kid, okay? And I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's just a lot. But I actually like the album. I like it more than I like in uh what is it in pieces. Because when I first heard that album, it did not hit me. And I said, Oh, this is not for me. And, you know, I listened to it again a couple of times and I said it kind of grew a little bit, but not that much. It, it it grew an inch. It grew an inch. Uh outside of the singles that she put out for that, I don't really I can't even name the song. I'm I'm not even gonna act, I'm not even gonna lie to you. But with this one, maybe because it is a sexual album, I don't know. You know, she's still trying to find her way or whatever. Sometimes I can understand what people say. It feels a little forced when she try to be a sex pot or whatever. And I, I get that because I do feel that sometimes. But at the same time, some of the music be good. So I be vibing to it. I will say this. One of my favorite songs off of that is Favorite. Because Favorite with Anderson Pop. That should have been a single. 
if you ask me. And it should have came out probably at the end of June, early July. No, literally at the end of June. It should have came out. It, it's a summer record. It just give me that summery vibe, okay? I don't know who's doing the PR and, and the management over there at the Parkwood. I don't know what's going on at the Columbia, but y'all need to pick better singles for um, Chloe to uh, put out. And y'all need to do a better promo. I'm going to just put that out there because, yeah, this is actually a decent album. You know, I actually like it. You know what I'm saying? I've been listening to it ever since it came out. And um, I didn't expect myself to do that because I didn't do it with the first one. But, yeah, we need a little bit more promotion. Bitch, and let me ask you this. Where the hell is my mind? You know, the VMAs, they came out with the awards and all that stuff, what they're going to do, who's going to be nominated and all this stuff. Is Normani going to even be performing at the VMAs? I, I'm a little bit confused, okay? Uh, is she doing a tour for her album? Like, she dropped that album and left. She said, here, yeah, bitch, this y'all y'all been complaining about this shit all this time. I finally dropped that shit. Take it, do whatever the fuck you want to do with it, because I'm not doing nothing else with it. I feel some type of way about that, but, you know, hey, shit happens, but... Girl, where you at? Ain't no performance, ain't nothing. You ain't got no tour dates. Lotto got tour coming up. Bitch, Chloe, Chloe and Normani should do a tour together. Chloe gonna, you know, be the headliner. So that's just that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm tired of the girls. Okay. Um, Beyonce got a whole bunch of country music awards uh, nomination for whatever country shit. Baby, it's about to be a fucking time. The people probably mad as shit. <laughs> this... Bitch came up in here and got all these nominations and she ain't even fucking country. Girl. <laughs> Go cry about it. But bitch, anyway. Um oh, I got a decent team. <laughs> Cause I'm telling y'all, had I did this shit at work like I had planned, baby, you probably wouldn't have got an hour out of me. Because when I tell you, I was just so out of it. And I think I was a little dehydrated as too. Because I didn't really drink nothing, um, no water yesterday. I don't know what the fuck I was doing yesterday. And then I, I, I was, I was, you know, when you drink and when you smoke, you got to make sure, you got to make sure, I don't drink. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about liquid water. That's what I'm talking about. You got to make sure you stay hydrated when you uh do certain activities. Okay, I just want y'all to know that. But I'm here. I'm getting there and we back, bitch. Make sure y'all watch uh, Family Empire Houston. It comes back this Friday. Okay. On, um, um, oh, well, it's a whole bunch of shit, y'all, on TV. And then Love and Marriage, Huntsville coming back. I saw the trailer for Love and Marriage to see. Uh, not DC, but um, Detroit. Y'all gonna be watching it. Y'all gonna... I think I might talk about it. It looked like it might be okay. Cause oh boy, the light skinned dude and um uh, Christina, whatever her name is, they getting a divorce, they separated. Who didn't see that coming? We all saw that coming from the very first episode of the first season. But um, yeah, and I think they got a new couple on there. So we'll see, we'll see how it is. Um what else is going on? I just be thinking about some stuff. Let me see if I got everything. Since I got y'all on the line, <laughs> it wasn't even that funny. <laughs> y'all, y'all can see I am tired. I had to go to the bank after this. Sexy Red see it going through postpartum while making a hit song, Get Sexy. Oh, okay, that's cute. Uh, Lonnie loves react to false Taylor Perry story. Paraphrase. I won't say anything else. Lonnie, you said that shit. And you, you won line. The motherfucking name of goddamn, um, what do you say? Lonnie Love de de uh, denies a recent story about Tyler Perry and clarifies her previous constructive criticism about him. In fact, the comedian and the actress say she actually friends with Tyler Perry. Um, she took to X last month she said i love tyler i love that tyler perry is paying black actors now i wish he would hire black writers and directors that have experience to help him with his movies he could improve the movies and make them award worthy if he would stop trying to save money by doing the writing and directing himself fast forward to the present lonnie is setting the record straight girl don't nobody give a damn you said what you said 
And what you said wasn't a goddamn lie. So what do you need to clear it up for? Just because you're friends with the man? You anyways. Oh yeah, and I feel bad for y'all that's um going to see Usher or y'all thought y'all was going to see Usher today. He had to push that bitch back. He had to push it back because he said, listen, I want to give y'all my 100%, and I'm just not at 100% right now. Now, Usher, you make me a little nervous. You make me a little nervous, okay? And I just feel like maybe you probably should have took a break. At this point, even though I love the fact that you are going on tour, and I can't wait till, I mean, I'm pretty sure you probably be good by October. You're going to be here for Halloween. That's going to be fine. That's going to be fire, right? Um, but I just feel like maybe he really should have took a break, like a year break after he did his Las Vegas residency. Uh, yeah, because that's a lot. You know, he was doing that damn near every other day or something like that for a long period of time. And now you got to put your body through some more shit because now you got to get ready for a bigger scale production because now it's going to be traveling and all this stuff. Oh, my God, it's just going to be a lot. Do you have the Super Bowl and all that? The anxiety with that girl. What's going on? Let yourself rest. I know they mad. Y'all mad. I'd be mad too, but I understand. Oh, he did it hours before. Oh, yeah, because people said that they flew out there. <laughs> Listen, this is why I be, this, this is certain artists that I would never buy a ticket and see them in a, a different city, okay, than my own. Because if I find out that something is canceled and I didn't already flew my ass out there. Bitch, what the fuck am I gonna do? You gonna give me some more? Um, you gonna reimburse me and buy me another plane ticket when it comes? No, I want my refund at this point. Give me my money back and I'm not coming back. That'll be it. I don't care what the issue is. I'm just saying it's I'm not gonna be mad. Well, depending on when you tell me. Because if it's an excuse of you being sick or whatever, I can understand it because shit happens. But I'm still gonna be in my feelings and I'm not gonna come back. I'll see you when I see you, but I'm not going to travel to see you, okay? It's only a couple of artists that's very dependable, and they're not going to do that shit. Um, People Choice Country Awards. That's what it is. Hmm. All right. Y'all heard about that lady that stole all that goddamn chicken. $1.5 million from the school. $1.5 million worth of chicken and they knew she was taking it and they just kept on letting it rack up and rack up and rack up. Why would y'all do that? Stop her, okay? I really hope she was trying to give it out to the people that was in need or she was. She probably was doing a little side business hustle, baby. You gotta, you gotta be more careful than that, okay? Mama said instead of stealing tissue and pencils from the school and a little bit of computer paper, I'm gonna steal some goddamn chicken, bitch. You could have took a stapler, okay? Like, let's be real. Y'all have took a couple of stuff from work. Yeah? Because my mama damn sure used to take, listen, my mama worked at this this uh corporation. She worked with American College of Surgery. I'm going to put her business out there. Fuck all of that. No, let me stop. But yeah, she used to take stuff from them. Girl, we used to have printer paper sometimes. We used to have um, school supplies. <laughs> That stapler, bitch. <laughs> we just had all that tape. Girl, girl, but okay, I'm just saying it is what it is, you know. Um, but mom took 1.5 and they gave her nine years in prison. I really feel like that's a little extreme. No, that's a lot of extreme. I get it, it's 1.5 million dollars. Give her a fucking fine, put her on probation, say she can't work in the CPS. You you can't work in the school system no more, okay? Give her that. Nine years in prison, and she an older lady, too. Okay, oh, hey, what you in for? I stole some chicken. What? <laughs> That's fucked up, and I feel like it's successful because she black. I feel like if it was somebody else, she wouldn't. Somebody gonna be like, it ain't no race thing. Well, to me, it is. Because why are you giving her nine years for stealing some chicken? <laughs> she was hungry. She was trying to help the people. That's what I'm going to put it out there as. Anyway, let me get the hell up off of here. I wish her the best of luck. And it's this football player that came out and said he'll pay the 1.5. Okay, he'll pay that 1.5 so she won't have to go to jail. Of course, they ain't going to do the shit. That's so fucked up. And this is out here in Chicago. I mean, in Illinois. Where? Let me see where is that for real. Do I know her? Nah, I don't, but she do. Nah, I don't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Be a rug. We here for you, girl. We here for you. Mm. And it was, it was little by little, baby. 68 years old, and y'all gonna put her in jail for stealing some chicken. Let that lady slide. She been slaving over reheating y'all food for y'all goddamn badass kids. And you mad because she got some chicken wings, 11,000 cases of chicken wings in her personal cargo van. See? She was doing it for the kids. It says the food was meant for children learning remotely at the time during the pandemic and was available for the parents to pick them up from the school if needed. She was found guilty of theft and operating a criminal empire. Oh, it's a, a criminal enterprise when they she helping the kids. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> anyway, they acting like she was selling coke. But give me a give me a six piece with a eight ball on the side. Like that's what y'all acting like. God damn. Anyway, let me get up off of here. I'm rambling, y'all. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all week. I really do. Have a great one. Um, shout out to the city. Y'all had the Bud Billiken Parade. I had absolutely no idea until I seen it on the TV and my, my um, hairstylist was like, did you get caught up in the... Um? I said, what? Girl, the Bud Billiken Parade, I don't go to school. <laughs> oh, wow. I forgot all about it. But that shows you that it's time for the kids to go back to school. I know half y'all parents are glad. Okay? Get these little motherfuckers out my house. All right? There it is. Y'all eating up all my damn food. It's time for y'all to go back to school and eat up theirs. All right, there it is. But um, y'all enjoy yourself. Y'all have a good one. Y'all be blessed. And thank y'all for rocking with and being so understanding. All right, I see y'all later. Peace. Oh, child.